Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for gathering with us this morning. We're excited to share the word of God with you. Praise the Lord. God has great things in store. I tell you what, you can't lose when we have the Bible, the Holy Ghost, and the fellowship of one another. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day that we get to gather around the Word of God. We thank you for grace deposits and truth impartations. We thank you for the Holy Spirit directing our thoughts, directing our words today, my words, my thoughts. Father, we thank you and praise you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, bring revelation knowledge to us. Help us not just to learn the principles of the Word of God, but to apply them and live them out every single day of our lives. Father, we thank you for helping us grow. We thank you for helping us become more like you. We thank you for getting in position to be used to your fullest potential and capacity. And Father, we thank you and praise you for your work in our lives. We love you today. We praise you and we give you honor and glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to go in your Bible this morning to Ephesians chapter 4. And I want to talk to you about a very important topic. It's something that will impact every single area of our life. If we choose to have this mentality, if we choose to uh, embrace what God wants, then it will impact, uh, significantly impact every single area of our life. And that is growth. God wants us to grow. Uh, say that with me. God wants me to grow. God wants me to grow. How do we know that? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, verse 15, I'm going to read it to you from the message translation. It said, God wants us to grow up. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and to tell it in love. Like Christ in everything, we take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. Notice the first part of that verse says, God wants us to grow up. So God wants us to grow up and to change. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature, right? And in fact, in order for us to experience all that God desires, in order for us to do all that God created us to do and to fulfill our purpose, then it requires that we grow and that we change, right? Um, you're in Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at uh, verse chapter 2 and verse 10. <clears throat> Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship. Thank God we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You were created for good works. Praise the Lord. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I like the New Living Translation. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. Did you know you're God's masterpiece? You are his workmanship. And he had something in mind when he created you. He created you to do good things. And he planned those things for you to do a long time ago. Amen. And just like a designer or a sculptor, God has something in mind when he created you. Amen. <clears throat> and so he created us not just to, we, God wants us to become like him, but he also created us to do things for the kingdom of God. He created us to do good works, right? And so our relationship with God shouldn't, shouldn't just affect who we are. It should also affect what we do. We need to do the good works that he created us to do. We know we need to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Amen. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> one of the reasons we need to grow <clears throat> is because as humans, <clears throat> we were created, you know, you know, around Christmas time and things like that. If you buy Christmas gifts, particularly when your kids are small, on the packaging, uh, sometimes you'll get that gift and then it doesn't work because it has a little little phrase on the bottom that says batteries not included. Batteries not included. Well, guess what? Sometimes as humans, we come with batteries not included. Uh, sometimes we're like a computer that you purchase and you need software to do a certain thing, but it says software not included. Software not included. And so we come like that. And so what we need is we need to load things on our life so that we have programs that cause us to be able to function and do what God created us to do, which means that we need to grow. We need to download. We need to download information into our heart and into our mind so that we can do what God created us to do. Amen. That's why we need to constantly be learning and growing. And so growth and change are necessary if we want to accomplish God's best, if we want to be used 
the way that God wants to use us and he created us to be the things he created us to do, we're going to have to grow and change. And so regardless of what you're talking about, the things we're going to share with you will help you in every area of your life. Growth and change will help you be the best version of yourself you can be. And, you know, when you do something for the first time, that's not the best time that you're ever going to do it, right? So, for instance, the first time you do a certain job, that's not going to be the best time that you do that job. Uh, the first time that you engage in a certain area of ministry, whether that's helping in worship or whether that's ministering the word or whether that's ushering or whether that's teaching in children's ministry, whatever it might be, that's not going to be the, the best time that you do that, right? The first time that you teach, it will not be the best time you do it. The first time that you serve or help will not be the best time that you do it. The first week of your relationship, of a relationship, is not going to be the best uh, part of that relationship, right? Uh, we have to learn. We have to grow. In other words, I, I hope, I hope, praise the Lord, that Pastor Samantha will think that I'm a better husband today than I was the first week we were married. Praise the Lord. I would hope that she would feel like I'm a better husband over time because I've had time to learn, to grow, to improve myself, to learn how to treat a woman. Praise the Lord. Right? And so in your relationships, we should grow and we should develop. And really my commitment to growth not only is what God wants, but it's, it's really the key to improving my relationship, all of my relationships, right? And so how do I learn these new skills? How do I grow? If we know God wants us to grow, then how do I grow? How do I change, right? And so <clears throat> there are four principles I want to share with you this morning. And I want us to examine our own life and see, okay, where do I need to integrate these into my life, right? So let me give you these four keys first. The first one is helpful relationships. What are the things that are necessary to grow? Number one, helpful relationships. Number one, helpful relationships. Number two, improving in knowledge and wisdom. Gaining knowledge and wisdom, improving in knowledge and wisdom. Number three, experience. Experience. And then number four, having a structured process, having a structured process. So we'll break down all of these. But the first one we want to talk about is helpful relationships, helpful relationships. Now, many people think wrong about growth. They think, well, I can just, you know, if I need to grow, I can just read some book or I can just listen to some message, right? Or I can just listen to something and I can grow. And reading and listening are important, but we also need relationships to grow. Let me say that again. We also need relationships to grow. Relationships help us process and apply the information that we're getting. Relationships help us process and apply the information that we're getting. Uh, let me give you a good example uh, that illustrates what we're talking about. <clears throat> but one time a, a lady, uh, she called in and, and she needed a financial breakthrough in her life. And so certainly the Bible says, my God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. So we know the will of God. We know God wants to supply for us. So I began to talk to her. You know, I made sure she was born again. I made sure she's walking in fellowship with God. And then, and then there was a book that I recommended to her that kind of helps you assess different areas of your life to see, okay, is there something I need to adjust to get in position? Maybe there's something that's hindering uh, what God wants to do in my life. And so I recommended this book. And this lady says, I've read that book. I got that book. I done every, I do everything in that book. Right. And so at that point I was getting ready to tell her, well, just stand on the word, just stand, haven't done all stand. But right when I was getting ready to say that the Holy ghost, thank God for the Holy ghost, the Holy ghost said through me, you need to forgive your mother-in-law. And I didn't even know that this woman had a mother-in-law that was living. Right. I didn't I didn't know the relationships this woman had, but the Holy Ghost said, you need to forgive your mother in law. And all of a sudden there was silence on the phone. And all of a sudden she began to cry and she said, you're right. Now, here's what I want you to understand is that in that book and in the Bible, we learn about forgiveness. But she had the information, but it wasn't until it was in the context of relationship that she was able to see that she needed to do that and that it was brought to light and, sh and, and she was able to apply the principles that she knew, right? 
So sometimes we're blinded by things and relationships can help us see them. And so <clears throat> principles are processed in the context of relationship. Principles are processed in the context of relationship. Um, <clears throat> sometimes people want to lose weight and get in shape. And somebody says, oh, no, oh, no, pastor's going there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Well, <clears throat> particularly at this time of the year, right? Well, um, sometimes people want to lose weight and get in shape. And exercising and lo losing weight are easier in the context of relationship. If you have somebody with you that's encouraging you, if you have somebody with you that you can walk through the process, if you exercise together, if you want to do things and eat better together, right? The relationships can strengthen us, right? And the Bible is clear because it points out how relationships can help us grow. The Bible is clear about that. Relationships can help us grow. <clears throat> Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, and I want to read Ephesians 4, verse 16 in the New Living Translation. Ephesians 4, verse 16 in the New Living Translation. The Bible says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. <clears throat> what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that God puts the, the body of Christ together and each as each part of the body of Christ does its work, it helps the other parts grow. So relationships are necessary to grow. Relationships are necessary to grow. Now, what are some of the things that relationships do for us? Well, number one, relationships give you support. Relationships give you support. Uh, for instance, I mentioned, you know, uh, getting in shape or, you know, you know, if you want to lose some weight or do whatever, sometimes people will go to a personal trainer, right? Well, what does that trainer do? That trainer gives you support. That trainer gives you encouragement. That trainer also tortures you. <laughs> Give me three more. Give me four more, right? Well, I said there's two people that cannot count. One is personal trainers and one is physical therapists because they'll say, give me five. And then when you give them five, they'll say, give me two more. Well, they obviously can't count. But personal trainers, that relationship can provide support to cause you to move beyond what you would normally do in the natural. And so the same thing is true, not just in that context, but support groups, friendships, right? Relationships in the church, they can provide support for you that you would not have individually. And so what else do relationships do for us? Relationships provide accountability. Relationships provide accountability. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 26, 2 Chronicles 26, and I'm going to read verse 5. But in this portion of scripture, it's a powerful scripture because it illustrates how accountability and relationships impacts our life and can improve our life. <clears throat> but in this portion of scripture, we read about King Uzziah. And King Uzziah, the Bible says, served the Lord during the days of Zechariah. Uh, so Zechariah was one of God's representatives, and Zechariah influenced the king to seek God. And as the king saw God, God gave him success, God prospered him. And we know the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. So God wants to bless us as we seek first the kingdom of God. But sometimes we need support to seek the things of God. Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we get into things we don't need to be involved in. But when we're held accountable, then people can encourage us to seek the Lord. But notice what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5. Uzziah saw God during the days of Zechariah. What does that mean? It means as long as Zechariah was living, Zechariah was all in the king's grill. What does that mean? That means that Zechariah was influencing the king to serve the Lord. But notice what it says. Uzziah sought God during the days of Zechariah, who taught him to fear God. And as long as a king sought guidance from God, God gave him success. Amen. Notice the power of accountability in this portion of Scripture. So relationships give us support. Relationships give us accountability. And relationships also provide modeling. Relationships also provide modeling. People learn through precept and example. People learn through precept and example. You know, have you ever been to a restaurant and maybe the two waiters or two waitresses 
came up to you and one of them said, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm serving you today. This is, this is Sarah, this is Sally, this is Bob. They are training and they're here to watch what I do. What is that? That's modeling, right? Modeling, showing them how. See, it's one thing to teach somebody. It's another thing to show them how. And that's an important part of growth and development, right? And so, <clears throat> so one key area of developing and growing is healthy relationships. And notice I said healthy relationships, right? Unhealthy relationships are not going to help us. They can be detrimental to our lives, but we need healthy relationships. All right, number two, <clears throat> how else can we grow? <clears throat> we can grow <clears throat> through increasing our knowledge and wisdom. We can grow through increasing our knowledge and wisdom. See, information will help you grow. Notice what the Bible says. Let's go to Romans 12 and verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, information is an essential part of transformation. Information is an essential part of transformation. If you want to be transformed, it's going to start with information, right? And so if you want to do a new thing, you have to learn a new thing. If you want to do something new, you have to learn something new. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I liked basketball. I grew up during the Michael Jordan era. And so, you know, obviously best basketball player ever, hands down. He's the GOAT, right? Well, I wanted to be a better basketball player. So, you know what I did? I went to the library and I got a book on how to shoot a basketball. And it gave you the fundamentals. It gave you how to do it. And, and it gave you the principles of how to shoot a basketball correctly to make sure you have good form. Because the better your form, the better shooter that you can become, right? Well, then I couldn't just take that information. I needed a coach, right? I needed a relationship. And then I needed experience, right? And then I needed a structured process. All the things we're talking about that are essential to growth are things that a coach provides. All the things that, that we talk about today that are part of the growth process, a coach provides. Think about a natural coach in a sport. What does he do? You have a relationship with your coach. The coach provides information to you on how to be successful in that sport. The coach has practice, which is experience. So you learn experience. And then there's times for the practice, which is a structured process. So all the four steps that we're going to talk about today that cause us to grow and cause us to change, we can see a clear example in the sporting world you have a relationship with the coach, the coach gives you information, the coach provides experience, and the coach gives you a structured time and process so that you can grow into the and develop. And the same thing applies to every area that we're talking about. Spiritual growth is the same. Growth in a certain area, maybe financial knowledge or maybe relationship knowledge, it's all the same. These principles apply in every area that you want to talk about, right? Um, <clears throat> now, sometimes... I'm not going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about myself because sometimes we can think, you know, I know what to do. I don't need, I don't need that information. And I remember when Annabelle was little, we had bought a, we had bought a rocking chair. We had bought a rocking chair for her, right? A kid's rocking chair. And so my wife said, uh, here's the directions. I said, I said, woman, I don't need the directions. I know how to build stuff, Right. Well, so I started putting it together and I thought, hmm, this looks like it goes here and this looks like it goes here and blah, blah, blah. And so I put this rocking chair together, but when Annabelle got on it, she went to rock and she fell over backwards. <laughs> Thank God she wasn't hurt. But as I looked at the directions, I found out that I put it on backwards, right? She rocked the wrong way, right? Well, it wasn't her fault, it was my fault because I put it together wrong. Why? Because I didn't get the information that I needed, right? And so we need to make, see, arrogance keeps you from gaining knowledge. Whew. That's good. Arrogance keeps you from gaining knowledge. So we have to have the humility to say, you know what? I need to grow. I need to improve. And you know what? We need to live with that mentality. No matter how much we know on a particular topic, we don't know everything. No matter how much we've studied or taught on a particular area, we don't know everything. 
right? And so we need to have a desire to grow and to move forward. And that's where uh, people can help us grow and develop. And so we can gain knowledge through reading things. We can gain knowledge through relationships. We can gain knowledge from hearing messages. We can gain knowledge through attending seminars and meetings and different things like that, right? So gain knowledge. So two things we learned so far. Number one, we can grow and change through healthy relationships. And number two, we can grow and change through increasing our knowledge and wisdom. Number three, we grow through experience. We grow through experience. Hebrews 5 verse 8 says, Hebrews 5 verse 8, and this is in the New Living Translation. Hebrews 5, I'll give you a second to get there. Hebrews 5 verse 8 in the New Living Translation. It says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. He learned obedience through the things that he suffered, right? So how did Jesus, when we look at this passage, it says he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. What's another way of saying that? How did Jesus learn obedience? Jesus learned obedience through the experience of suffering, right? Now, I recognize that's negative. Hey, I don't want to learn, I don't want to suffer. We, none of us want to suffer. But the point I'm making to you is we learn, we can learn from experience. We can learn from experience, right? Experience is an important part of growth and change. Let me show you the value of experience. <clears throat> let's say <clears throat> let's say you had a pain in your side and you go to the doctor and the doctor examines you and they say, well, <clears throat> you, uh, your appendix is about to burst and we need to take your appendix out, right? And the doctor says, um, okay, so there's two options for you. You can go see Dr. Jones, who has, who has been working uh, on that particular, has done, I mean, thousands uh, of surgeries to remove an appendix. I mean, he's he's well known. He's done thousands of surgeries, successful surgeries on that line. Or there's a medical student that just graduated. He's never done a surgery to remove an appendix, but he's read about it. <laughs> Now, you can go with Dr. Jones, who has the experience, or you can go with the medical student. If you go with the medical student, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit cheaper, right? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want somebody cutting on me that has no experience at cutting, right? Uh, what, what are we saying? We value experience. We value experience, right? Experience can give us time to learn and grow. Experience can give us time to learn and grow. And so what are we saying? You know, the first time that you play a sport is never going to be the best time that you play that sport. The first time that you play an instrument is never going to be the best time that you play that instrument, right? And so we, we need experience. We need time to learn and grow. And it's what you do with life that determines whether you grow or not. It's not just age don't just determine growth and change, but it's what you do with the time that you have that determines growth and change. So we've learned three keys so far, healthy relationships, increasing our knowledge and wisdom, and then experience. So let's talk about the last one, right? Uh, <clears throat> the last one we want to talk about is having a structured process, having a structured process. Now, what do we mean by that? Structure has to do with a, a system of doing things, a system. And so if you, for example, let me give you an example. If you want to build your spiritual life, then you need the structure of consistency in the local church. You need consistency of receiving the word of God into your life, right? And so the Bible says in Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25, Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25, I'm going to read this to you from the New Living Translation. But it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some do, but encourage one another, especially now the day of his return is drawing near. So in this portion of scripture, we can see the importance of relationships. We need to encourage one another. And then we can see the importance of structure, right? Making sure that we're in a, we're in a process and we have a system of growing. Um, <clears throat> I remember one time, uh, one of the, you know, leadership teachers and uh, one of the great leadership teachers is John Maxwell. He's written a lot of books on leadership and things like that. And I remember him telling a story one time and somebody approached him and said, when he was young and he was just starting out before he started teaching on leadership, 
somebody asked him, said, um, is growth important to you? And they said, he said, yeah, of course. And so they said, well, what is your growth plan? What do you do on a weekly basis to grow? And John Maxwell said, well, I really don't have a plan. And so the guy said, well, you really don't want to grow then. What was he saying? We need to have a structured system and things that we do that put us in position to grow, right? Otherwise, it's just a nice idea. But it becomes a reality when we get into a system of growth and change. Like, for instance, if you want to learn an instrument, then you get with a teacher and you set a time to go learn that instrument. If you want to play a sport, you go find where that sport is being played and you find out the times that they're going to play and you get involved, right? And so that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about building our spiritual life, we have to gather together. We have to hear the word of God. We have to apply it to our life, right? <clears throat> right? We need that, we need that structure in that system. <clears throat> structure provides consistency that's necessary for us to benefit. That structure provides the consistency, the ongoing nature that puts us in a position. It provides a time and a place and training periods so that we can continue to, to grow and to progress, right? Um, it's just like, you know, if you want to train in martial arts. Well, if you want to be a martial artist, then you have to have times when you practice. What is that? Structured time, structured system, right? And even going back to all of our illustrations, if you want to learn martial arts, well, you're going to have a relationship with the sensei. You're going to have a relationship with a martial artist that knows martial arts. That martial artist is going to give you knowledge and wisdom, right? He's going to provide practices where you do different katas and you do different things and blocks and hits and kicks and different things like that. And you practice those, right? That, that provides experience. And then there's going to be a structured system and time when you practice those things. So those are the four keys to growth. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Those are the four things that we need to grow. Healthy relationships, gaining knowledge and wisdom, uh, having experience, right? And, and creating a structured system where that you continue to grow. So this morning, my question for you is, which of those do you need to work on? You know, which of those do you need to work on? Which of those do you need to, to strengthen in your own life? Do I need to have healthy relationships, right? Do I need to engage those? Do I need to increase my, my knowledge and my wisdom, right? Um, do I need to practice things more? Uh, do I need to create a structured system to where I have an ongoing process and I know, hey, I'm, I'm in the process of growth. I'm training, right? It's just like going, if you want to get stronger, then you, what do you have to do? You have to eat right and exercise. You have to lift weights, right, if you want to get stronger. Well, if you don't have a consistent program of lifting weights, then you're not going to get stronger, right? And so if we don't have a structured plan to grow, then the thing is we're not going to grow the way we should. But here's what I want to encourage you. God said in the very beginning uh, of our sermon uh, that we talked about, Ephesians 4, God says God wants us to grow. And when you grow, you become like him and you get in position to be used by God to your fullest potential. And you also position yourself for his highest and best blessings. Amen. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that you want us to grow. We thank you for giving us the principles in the Word of God to help us grow. We thank you for healthy relationships in our life. We thank you for giving us wisdom and knowledge. Thank you for giving us a spirit of wisdom, a revelation and knowledge of Him. Father, we thank you for giving us that wisdom and knowledge. We thank you, Father, for providing opportunities for us to develop and grow. And Father, we thank you for giving us wisdom to know the things that we need to do, the systems we need to put in place to continue to progress and to become what, what you created us to become. Father, we thank you for these things. We praise you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there may be certain areas of your life you need to improve. You can take these principles and you can improve in any area. Your relationships, your finances, your marriage, your parenting, right? As, as a church member, as a church leader, right? In the business world, as a manager, as an employee, right? Uh, you know, in whatever area you want to talk about, you can grow and you can develop. God created us with that capacity. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be gathering with this, mo this morning and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Man sinned. God sent his sinless son to die for us, to, to pay the price for our sin so that we could have a relationship with God, so that we could be made right with God. And, and God made it real easy for us to do that. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So I tell you, the greatest day in my life was when I received Christ. And I want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. I'm going to pray and you can repeat after me as I pray. Maybe you're here also and you need to rededicate your life. You can also join in this prayer. Uh, pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I confess him now as my Lord and Savior. And I commit this day to love you, to serve you, and to get to know you better. Thank you, Lord, for helping me grow to become like you and to follow your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to go to our website at AbundantChurch.org. That's A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H.org. There's a contact button. Click that contact button. Let us know, hey, I received Christ today. Hey, I rededicated my life. Let us rejoice with you. We're so thankful that you're a part of the family of God and or reconnected. Uh, also, it's investment time into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. We want to say thank you for your faithful, consistent uh, tithes and offerings that enables us to lead people to a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, there's different ways that you can give, but one of the easiest ways is to go to our website at AbundantChurch.org. That's A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H, AbundantChurch.org. Uh, there's a give icon. You can click that give icon. It's real safe, simple, and easy to use. But however you give, thank you for your faithful and consistent giving. You know, the Bible says when we tithe, God will open the windows of heaven. And as we give our offering, God will multiply uh, those seeds. You know, God can bless our jobs, bless our businesses. And we say it like this, if God can get it through you, if you're a giver, then God can get it to you. He can do supernatural things to bless your life, bless your job, Bless your business. Amen. Let me pray for you right now. Father, we thank you and praise you, Father, for the opportunity to give this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our supply. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for your blessing on our finances. We thank you for blessing our jobs, blessing our businesses. We thank you for doing supernatural things. Thank you that debts are paid in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that things that have caused us financial problems are solved and removed and moved out of the way. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for helping us to become good stewards of all that you've provided for us. And we thank you for your blessing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, we want you to know that Pastor Samantha and I love you so much. We're excited to share the word of God with you. And until we're able to do that again, please know that we love you. We're praying for you. And God bless you.